I've got the infamous no-name universal tilt steering column right here in this box. I've got a fabricated floor plate and seal, and I've got a bastardized steering drop for the dashboard. If you want to see if this is going to work, stick around. What's up guys and welcome back to In The Shop TV. Well, it's time to put the steering column in my 55 Chevy truck. I don't know anything about this column. I had bought this years ago when I was working on a different project. I didn't even have this truck at the time. Got it at a car show, swap me, and I think I paid 75 bucks for it. It's a 28 inch black steering column. It could be a name brand, I don't even know, but it just doesn't have any markings on it. So I'm assuming it's, you know, your, your standard eBay or Amazon, whatever. For 75 bucks, I couldn't pass it up. Yeah, I know everyone says you gotta put the really expensive stuff when you're building the car. I don't care, I'm gonna try this out. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, we crash and die. No big deal. No, in all seriousness though, we've got a lot to do because to make this fit, we gotta fabricate a floor plate because I don't have the original one that comes with that anymore. We had to come up with a drop column to suspend this from the dashboard and keep everything centered up. So there's gonna be a little bit of fabrication involved in this video and um, that doesn't necessarily apply to you if you're just swapping out a column. There's parts readily available. I could buy the floor plate for this truck and slip it right in. These are found all over the internet. Even if you see them at larger retailers like Summit and Speedway, I think they're all kind of the, basically the same Chinese column, if you will. The bigger places like Summit and Speedway and, and Jags, they'll charge you, you know, 300 bucks. Uh, if you get them on uh, you know, Amazon or eBay, they're probably like half of that, I think, or maybe a little bit more, but they're not quite as expensive as the big retailers. But before we crack this open and take a look at it, guys, remember we have a big giveaway going on. We have our plasma cutter in the last video that we're giving away for free for one of you guys. We just opened the box, it's brand new. It's been used once just for the purpose of display and making the videos to show you guys how it works. But that's free to you guys. All you gotta do is be a subscriber to this channel. You gotta go back to that video, like it, I'd appreciate it if you watched it, and then comment that you're subscribed, and you do have to really be subscribed in order to win. The drawing is gonna be in a month from that video, so it's gonna be on October 15th, so make sure you follow along to see if it's you that won. All right, let's get into this thing. So we've got our tilt lever, turn signal, and our hazard switch. All right, so here it is. Looks like it has a pretty decent powder coat finish on it. I can't see any defects right off the bat. It's got the standard GM connector on it. Looking here on the other end, it's got your standard horn button. Just giving it a once over, it seems to be pretty decent. I'm gonna put this away for right now and start working on that floor plate in the cab. So here's our completed floor plate to save myself about 30 bucks. So I took my template and cut out a ring. Basically, I'll just be able to make myself a little foam gasket for this side of that. Just so we don't get any fumes or anything coming through that hole. So I really wanted to make this custom floor plate because number one, the original that came with the truck was just shot. I couldn't even make a template out of it because the screw holes were kind of mangled up and everything. So I didn't want to use that. The diamond plate, eh, it's just kind of a little extra cool detail that will give a cool look to it. Now that hole, I did make that slightly oversized. It's actually two and an eighth when the column is two inches. Why? Well, you're gonna have to adjust this in and out a whole bunch of times. And I just didn't want to scratch with the new column sliding it in and out. You gotta keep in mind, there's gonna be a floor plate that goes on the top of the carpet that I'll show you in a little bit that's gonna actually seal any type of space around that hole. So we don't have to worry about it being a little bit oversized. Also, I didn't show you guys, but I ended up not using this cab insulation foam as a gasket because even though it's thick enough, um, it has this, you know, kind of plastic layer on the back of it. And I thought that maybe just against the firewall and up where the headers are, it could melt. So instead I just got, you know, some regular foam weather stripping here where you peel the adhesive layer off and you got just straight foam on both sides. A little bit thicker, compressed real nice. And now I know for sure that I've got a really good seal on there. That's not gonna melt or do anything funny. All right, so I had some M6 bolts that are uh, titanium that I had left over from when I did the firewall and they fit perfectly in the factory holes. Just to secure it better, I put a lock down on the back of it. And I've also found my center marks here on the dash and I've got to go ahead and drill out one side because it's just a hair off. All right, that'll work out. All right, so everything fits good, but I really like it if those bolts were a little bit longer. So I'm gonna take it back out and see if I can get some threaded rod, cut it down and make a little bit longer bolts to go in there. So I went to the hardware store. They did have some threaded rod in quarter 20. Um, it was zinc coated, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I opted to spend an extra dollar and I got some stainless um, 
two and a half or three inch, excuse me, three inch stainless quarter 20 bolts. Um, just figured better to have the stainless. So this is how I like to cut bolts to put it in the vise and I thread a nut on here. Number one, this way I don't mar the threads up when I hold it. Number two, this cut end might be a little bit jagged where the threads are so I can back this nut off and it'll clean up the threads and be able to thread onto whatever it is we're gonna thread it into. So I went ahead and gave that a quick scuff with 320 just so I get something to stick to it. I'm not gonna prime it. I am gonna use this same Rust-Oleum appliance epoxy that I used in the four link. It flows out super smooth, like there's no orange peel at all. It's just a really nice glassy straight finish. It sticks to everything and it is super tough. So also it's not required to use primer or anything with epoxy paint. So really a big fan of this stuff. It should work out great on this. All right, so we're all dried up. That appliance epoxy did a fantastic job again. You can feel a slight drag when you put your finger over it because the stuff really takes a long time to cure, but it's totally handleable one day later. Just like that, we're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this bottom shackle off because you really can't slide it through since the steering column has that connector on it. All right, so I just slid it in and tilted down and already I can tell this drop bracket is no good. It's gonna have to go. That's a two and a half. We're gonna need a three and a half inch drop because it was making my angle too steep. Basically the bell or this top was almost hitting the dash and it made the snout come out almost pointing straight down. And I don't really want that angle when I start hooking up my linkage, it's just not gonna be good. So just to kind of feel it out, I just started loosening the bolts about a quarter of an inch and it already made a big difference in the angle on it. So um, that's a two and a half inch drop. We're gonna go to three and a half inch drop and I think we'll be where we need to be. It kind of sucks that I already painted it up and all that, but that's how it is a hot rod and you live and you learn. On a bright note, tomorrow is actually my birthday and the wife and I are going down one state to Atlanta. We're gonna go visit the world of coke and then right over there is summit racing so summit racing happens to have a three and a half inch one in stock that is black already so win-win happy birthday to me hey if any of you guys want a slightly used two and a half inch bracket i got one for sale at a discount of course All right, so we just got back from Summit, picked up a big banner, kind of did some window shopping, looked around for a while, picked up some cool swag and some parts. Here's a new drop we picked up at three and a half inches. It's all aluminum powder coated, looks really cool. I was happy to get this particular one too because the bolt spacing on this is exactly what we just drilled out on the dash. So no further modifications needed. All right, it looks like it's gonna work out a lot better. Let's try it out. All right, that looks a lot, a lot better. I like that angle a lot more. Not jumping the gun, but when I do my linkage, I might get away with just one universal. Um, I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch, but so far it's looking pretty good. I think the three and a half inch drop is probably perfect because if I went with a four and a half, then the opposite thing starts to happen where we start kicking that angle up too much. Then we have too much of an angle to go back down to the rack and pinion. So this is our black aluminum floor plate that we're going to be using. Basically it just kind of breaks apart. So this kind of circular shaped ball part slips inside there and allows it to pivot if need be, which I don't think ours is going to need to. And then this inner part has an O-ring on it that forms a seal. And this slides around the column and this gets pressed into place, it creates a good seal. I'm gonna take our brake lines back off because I don't wanna drill through there and hit them. And I mount that floor seal. Get our brake lines put back on here. 
So we're gonna get our blinker knob on. To do that, we gotta take this horn button off. And this slides right in there. Get our hazard on. Okay, now that the hazard and blinker on, I was able to straighten out the columns nice and even. Good. So it's the next day and I went on Amazon and I actually found next day shipping on some really cool black billet levers for that column. So let's check them out. Oh, too bad we don't have column shift, huh? That's really nice. All right, here's our tilt lever. You can tell right off the bat, this feels really nice. These are like really cheap potted metal that's uh, got a chromed finish on it. This is a lot nicer. Looks a lot better. So I've just put the bench seat in here that we're gonna be using. We got a reupholster, I just have kind of cloth cover over it right now. But this is a huge part of installing steering, getting your brake pedal right and getting everything where it needs to be. You really have to get your seating set to where it's gonna be because everything revolves around that. It actually feels a little bit high to me where it is, but um, I know a lot of people use this seat. But we really need to get our steering wheel put in before we can make any type of determination on how high or lower seat is or how forward or back it needs to go. Once we get a steering wheel on that column, we might have to move it out a little bit more. We might have to move it back down towards the firewall a little bit more. Who knows? All right, so we're at a really important part of this installation, and that's going to be the steering wheel and the hub adapter assembly itself. If you look on the internet, there is a ton of information, and none of it is probably what you need if you're installing a universal column. And with all these, they have one thing in common, which is that none of them come with instructions. So this is exactly how you install these, or at least how I found out that it works perfectly. So on your column, you get the horn button, which it's, I call a horn button, but it's actually called a cancel cam. And the purpose of this is this brass ring makes contact with the plunger right here. And um, when you push down on the horn button on your steering wheel, um, it sends the uh, continuity through there and you get your horn. Now these two little funny tabs right here on the side are actually what makes this a cancel cam. Basically those two funny little arms have to get installed with this horn right here at the 10 to 11 o'clock position. What that does, I don't know if you can see or not, but it places those two funny little arms there in between the, these two round parts of the spring. So when we put that back down there, it falls right in between the two of them at the 10 and 11 o'clock position, okay? What those do is when you put your blinker on and you turn this, it cancels out that blinker so that it goes off by itself. You guys are all familiar with that. There you go. Now taking this back off for a second, they give you the spring, which in some instructions say it goes inside of here or down on this shaft first. And then this cancel cam goes over it. And as you see, it fits right inside of there perfectly. Um, it sticks it up kind of proud and it's got the spring action on it. And that's not correct in my opinion, but I have seen instructions where it does say to do that for whatever reason. Um, it's called a bearing preload spring. What I found is that I don't need it at all, actually. It actually hurts my insulation. It doesn't allow for a proper insulation. So we're gonna discard that. They give you this little tiny bearing or spacer, which I put down there just so that your cancel cam doesn't dig into any me mechanisms down there. We install the cancel cam at that, where the horn or the horn button here is at that 10 and 11 o'clock position. They then give you this spacer, which is gonna go over the shaft. And then we have our actual hub adapter here. This is for a five to six bolt steering wheel. It's aluminum billet, it's black, it matches what we're trying to do here. But these all come in different configurations and different depths and different sizes. So a good idea would be to have a couple of these spacers on hand, just in case your adapter that you end up purchasing makes it sit too proud or too flush to where it will bind with the actual column itself or have too much of a gap. This spacer works just perfectly so long as I do not use that spring. So I'm gonna go ahead Slip this on over the wire. A little difficult with one hand, bear with me. There we go. Sits on there nice and flush. We got perfect gap right there. No spring at all. Run it 
down. We got a nice smooth operation. Let's try it the other way. There's our clicks. There's the cancel. Working out perfectly, guys. I'm gonna leave the links and part numbers for all these types of things that I have here in the video um, in the comments and in the video description, which is the hub adapter. Um, I found a similar column. I don't know, again, I bought this a long time ago, so I don't know where it came from, but I see pretty much the same thing on Amazon and eBay, and I'll leave a link for that. And then I'll leave a link for the steering wheel as well. All right, so the next one we have to do is this is the lead for the horn button itself. With the newer style uh, steering wheels, there's gonna have a ground wire that needs to get attached to one of these holes right here. So let's go ahead and make up one of those. Now, if you just want to verify before you install your steering wheel that your actual riding ground wire is making contact with that plunger underneath, you'll take your multimeter, put one probe to that center wire. You're going to set your multimeter to the continuity setting and take the remaining probe and go to the black terminal. When we hear that beeping, we know we have continuity, so we're making good contact. You don't necessarily have to do that. It just gives me a peace of mind and verification that I know we are, in fact, making contact. All right, so I made up a quick wire with just a ring terminal on one end and a spade terminal just like we have here on the other end. And I got a short half inch, 5 16 bolt thread into those holes. So one really important note, the way this ground system works with the horn button is that this black wire is from the horn feed from your actual harness. There's a relay that comes up through there and it has that riding ground um, cancel can that I showed you that makes contact with the plunger. Um, and then when you depress the horn, it closes the contact to here to ground, okay? Now, what I didn't tell you is that this column is not grounded. So basically when you press the horn, nothing's gonna happen. On your factory vehicles, you don't have to worry about that your column's already grounded. It's probably grounded up to where it mounts to the dash or in other places, it's not a concern for you. But when you're putting in a column for the first time, building a frame wall frustration such as this, we're gonna have to ground the column. And I think what I'm gonna end up doing is going on the firewall side, putting a small little hole in the outer pipe or the outer casing of the column itself, and then putting a small little wire from there to a ground on the firewall. But really important, you gotta make sure that that shaft is grounded in one way or another. By doing it that way, there's a bearing inside the column that makes contact with the outer sleeve of the column and with the shaft itself. So that will give you an adequate ground but you gotta make sure the column's grounded, otherwise your horn's not gonna work. Or you can do like a push button horn on your dash or something like that if you don't wanna use the button on your steering wheel. All right, so this is the steering wheel we're gonna be using. It's a black, either powder coated or electroplated finish, really nice, it's got the finger grooves in the back of it with a nice mahogany wood wrap on it, black line down the center and aluminum rivets. I was gonna go all black, but I figured I kinda wanted to break it up a little bit and this might actually work out really cool with an idea I have for the bench seat. So I'm gonna get started by taking these bolts out and taking the horn button off. All right, your button's off, we're gonna slide our wires through the center. Well, so what do you guys think? I think it looks pretty badass. It's comfortable for me to get in and out. I don't hit the steering wheel at all with my thighs or anything like that. It feels pretty good in relation to where the wheel and the seat is together. I don't know, I'm liking it. If I had to knock on it at all, I would say that the 14 inch wheel it might be a hair small, only because I'm a tall guy, I'm about six foot, and it kind of impedes your view a little bit at the top where that gauge bezel is gonna be. I'm not gonna take any action on that yet because we wanna have our gauges in. I wanna see what it looks like before I do that but I could always pull that steering column out a little bit, which will raise it a little bit higher. We have about three inches of room to pull it in or out, and the seat is all the way back, and I have plenty of room between my big old belly and the steering wheel, so um, there's plenty of room if I need to move the seat forward or back to adjust it to see better that way too. So there's a lot of options, and I don't want to take any action on it yet, just because I want to see how everything looks when you get those gauges in it. You know what, before I put out videos, I scour YouTube to see if there's any information on what I'm doing or if this is gonna be redundant. There's a lot of column videos and there's a lot of steering wheel and adapter videos, but a lot of them are just kind of vague and they leave out a lot of information. 
I hope that I covered as much as I could in this thing today so that you guys can get a sense of what you really need to do and what really has to happen when you're working with an aftermarket column like this. My thoughts on this column and wheel, well, I really like the wheel a lot. The adapter worked out perfectly. I'm really happy with how that came out. The column itself, it's working fine, but you can definitely tell the difference between this and say like a Flaming River and I did a column, mostly in just the construction of it. You can tell if you ever play with one of those more expensive columns, man, it's just kind of tanky. You know, it feels like real beefy. They use thicker metal. There's a lot tighter tolerances. Things don't wobble. I mean, this, if you really, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there's a little bit of slop in it, not too much. And it's going to tighten up a little bit when we put our linkage on. But still, overall, I think there's just a thinner gauge metal and whatnot. I do think it's going to work. I think it's going to be fine. And if you're on a budget, you know, I don't, don't be afraid that you're going to, you know, die like everyone makes it. You know, you have to do the expensive steering column or that's it. Your life is over. I don't necessarily think that. Um, I think this will work out just fine. And if it doesn't, we may change it out for a more expensive one at a later time. But for right now, I mean, for 75 bucks, I had it laying around for so many years. It's about time to put it to use. And this is the perfect opportunity for it. Guys, don't forget, we've got a huge giveaway coming up. You definitely want to enter to win that plasma cutter. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe so that on October 15th, when we pick the winner, you guys will have a shot. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. Hope to catch you guys in the next one. Until next time, I'll see you in a shot.